Welcome to Domain's tutorial. This tutorial builds on our data to reporting and analysis tutorial. If you haven't done so, please look at that tutorial to get a basic understanding of how data sources and domains work. Domains are a modern web-based high-performance metadata modeler that allows you to build physical and business models on top of your underlying data source and use them in ad hoc views. Domain allows you to blend data across various sources be it flat files, RDBMS, NoSQL, web services, or REST API. It allows you to join data across various tables or derived tables. Domains also have a concept of a pre-filter values and calculated fields. Pre-filter values are only visible at the domain level and is not visible to the reporting user, whereas a calculated field is visible to the reporting user and can be shared across multiple ad hoc views. Domains allow you to build a business view on top of your physical data model and categorize your data in sets. Domains also have a concept of defining row level and column level security on top of your data and apply language bundles. Domain facilitates query optimization with its in-memory engine. In this tutorial, we'll create a domain on top of a Foodmart database that comes pre-installed with the server. Then we'll look at all the different functionalities that we discussed in our presentation. Let's create a new domain. We click on create domain. The system prompts us to choose the underlying data source. We'll use Foodmart, which is the Postgres database that comes pre-installed with the server. After we have selected the data source, we come to the domain designer. Since the underlying data source was a schema-based data source, the system is asking us to select a schema. We'll select public and move it to selected schemas. Once I click on public on the left-hand panel, it shows me all the tables from the public schema. As part of this tutorial, we'll do a customer segmentation analysis. And for that, I would need three different tables. The first would be a sales fact table that gives me all the sales information in 1998. Next, I would add a customer table so that I can analyze all the sales around my customer attributes. And the last would be a product table to further analyze the sales across my different product attributes. Once I'm done selecting my tables, I move to the join session. I can see that I have selected three tables. Let me first start by choosing the customer ID from the sales fact table and dragging it to the designer section. As it says here, drag a field to begin creating a join tree. Once I drop the customer ID field, it automatically creates a join tree and I can always rename the join tree to a business friendly name. I'll give it a name called sales analysis. Then I'll go to the customer table and drag the customer ID here to complete my join expression. So it says the join is between sales fact and customer and they're the joined and customer ID. I can choose any operator from the operator dropdown list. For this join expression, equal to operator is the best suited one. Domain designer supports four type of joins, inner, left outer, right outer, and full outer. My next step is to join the sales table with the product table. I'll drag the product ID from the sales fact table. Then I'll select the product ID from the product table and join that with the product ID from the sales fact table. My join tree is complete. Once I'm done defining my joins, I'll move to the pre-filter section. The pre-filters allow the domain designer admin to create a filter which is only visible at the domain level and not visible to the reporting user. For this tutorial, I'll create a pre-filter on the city field from the customer table. Either I can double click or drag and drop the city field onto the designer palette. We have the field, we have the operator, and then we have the value. I'll choose the value, San Francisco, and just say, okay. This creates my pre-filter, which is city equals San Francisco. My next step is to create a calculated field. Domain designer supports three types of calculated fields a constant calculated field, a table-based calculated field, and a joint tree based calculated field. For this tutorial, we'll use a calculated field based on a table. I can right-click on customer table and say create calculated field. The new calculated field dialog box comes up. I can give the calculated field a name, define the resulting type of calculated field. I'll select string, and then I'll expand the customer table and define a calculated field which is a combination of city and country. Clicking on validate button 
will validate the syntax of the field. Once the validation is successful, I can click on create field and it will create a calculated field right under customer table. Since I have defined my pre filter and calculated field, I will move to the data presentation section. This is where I define the business view that will be visible to my reporting users. I can see all the available fields on the left hand palette. I can in either drag and drop the entire table or I can choose certain fields from each table. For my analysis, I'll choose certain fields from sales fact, which will be store sales, store cost, customer ID, and product ID. Then I'll add two sets, one each for customer attribute and product attribute. I'll go to the product table. I'll go to the product table and select certain fields that I'll drag it to the product attribute set. Then I'll choose certain attributes for my customer table. One of that can be a calculated field that I created. I'll add a couple of more. There are four properties shown across each field. That is label, field type, summary calculation, and description. These are the default properties. If you want to look at the other properties, you can either click on the gear button and choose the type of property that you want to see. For example, if I want to see the data properties, I'll click on data properties. The other way is to click on the expand button next to the field and it will show you all the properties attached to that field. All the values of the field are in inline editing mode. That means I can click on the field, change the value and just hit enter. I don't have to hit on any save button to save the changes. Domain designer assigns a field type to every field based on the metadata it receives from the underlying data source. This may or may not be accurate every time. For example, the customer ID is marked as a measure. For my analysis, I would want that to be a dimension. Same goes for product ID. I can also change the summary calculation to count distinct. If I don't want a particular field for my analysis, I can always remove it from here. If need be, I can always add them back. The last tab of Domain Designer is the Options tab. This is where you can add security file to define your row level and column level security and apply locale bundles. This is the end of Domain's tutorial. In this tutorial, we covered how do we create a domains on top of a data source, select our schema and tables, build joins, define pre filters and calculated fields, and finally define our business view. Hopefully, this tutorial gives you a good understanding of domains. If you want to learn more about domains and look at our advanced tutorials, you should go to our YouTube channel, JasperSoft Embedded BI, as shown here.